the way it Good morning. We're back on Morning Coffee on Radio Vision Network. I'm Gary Frisch here with Reputation Rap. I'm with Swordfish Communications. I'm sitting here with Charlene and Mark, our esteemed showcos. <laughs> uh oh. The show co word again. Esteemed. <laughs> Yeah, he said esteemed. That's okay. We'll take it. We'll take it. (laughs) He's from the Keith Reynolds school of uh, hosting, where he he turns the co-hosts into show co's and co-hosts and all this other stuff. I like show co. (laughs) Term stuck with me. So Gary, let's uh, let's let's get right into it. Let's. What are we talking about this week? Well, we're going to talk about crises. Uh, Every organization seems to have a crisis from time to time. Big, small, for profit, non profit. National brands, smaller companies, lesser-known companies. Um, you know what? What got me thinking about this was the NFL uh, yesterday um, was dealing with one of their crises in a rather significant way, and it was kind of overdue as far as I'm concerned. Um, the news came out last year that the military had been paying the league for these shows of support for the military, for you know salutes to veterans and, and active duty soldiers uh, during games. And, you know, it was a big to-do back then. It made the NFL look bad because the average fan certainly thought that these were philanthropic, kindness of the heart sort of things. Uh, Well, that wasn't the case. And so yesterday, Roger Goodell um, announced that the NFL was actually paying back uh, the military to the tune of $724,000 for 14 teams that had paid for those salutes. Um, and that's it for restitution? Is yeah, that's pay? a drop no, in the, the pocket. The pay, the, yeah. the pay was crazy. several million dollars over the last four years, apparently. Um, their internal audit revealed, and this is, you know, we're taking their word for it, that those types of salutes got uh, lumped into the advertising payment the military pays the NFL for recruitment efforts. And it makes sense that the military would pay the NFL and other professional sports leagues for recruiting. Uh, it's important. It's advertising, after all. Mm-hmm. Um, but these salutes should not have been part of that. No. That budget. Absolutely and not. So they're making it right at this point, uh, which is obviously the right thing to do. Um, you know, it goes a long way in restoring some fans' faith in the NFL, especially those fans who were kind of put off by the fact that, well, you know, this league is, you know, charging to honor. You know, troops are putting their lives on the line. But you know what, Gary? I look at it and I hear that, and I think to myself, man. Talk about doing the very least that you could do. So they're paying back that line item, basically, right? right? They took that number, and they're like, okay, well, we'll pay this 700 and change, whatever the number, exact number is. We'll pay this back. But they had a real opportunity there to say, listen, we're going to pay back the 700000 and we're going to give 500000 to the Wounded Warrior Project yeah, yeah. Right. or some <laughs> other uh, veteran service, right? We're talking about a million dollars in a in a league that generates billions, billions. right? So <laughs> this would have been a move that that he would have been able, Roger Goodell would have been able to really shine a positive light on the league by saying, "Look, we realize this was wrong. We're paying it back, and we're, and we're, ma- and we're matching the amount with with uh, and, charity." And donations. that's if you believe their story that this was accidentally grouped into the right. accounting yeah. for the other thing. Uh, you can never be sure whether or not that's just uh, lip service at this point right. in time. Uh, you know, damage control, so to speak. And that's what crisis communications is. It's so, it, it's damage control. So my question is, if you're not a huge organization like them, and you're a small business, and you have an issue, how do you handle this damage control or crisis PR management? How do you do well, it? Well, the first thing is to recognize it before it happens if there's going to be an issue. And that could be a matter of, you know, uh, what your uh, tonality is, you know, what the optics are, what you're going to do. And that's why... Um, heads of, you know, the C-suite should be involved. I'm sorry, that's why uh, the marketing and PR department should be involved in decisions made on the C-suite level so they can uh, give that point of view that the executives might, might be overlooking. Uh, that's the first thing to try to avoid in the first place. Uh, beyond that, once a, once a crisis occurs, you need to, you need to own it. Um, quite simply, you need to take charge of it. You need to uh, find out why it happened. You need to explain why it happened and you need to rectify the situation as right. quickly as possible to regain the trust of customers and your other constituents, mm-hmm. parents, um, right. you know, government agencies, whatever your audience is. And, 
you know, what it, what it comes down to is having a plan. Mm -hmm. And even small organizations should be planning for crises um, because at some point something's going to happen. And, you know, it could be a wage issue. It could be an employee or a customer that gets hurt on your property. Um, it could be that all kinds of things. And yeah, if you have a plan, um, you're prepared for it. Right. And the plan should include, um, you know, who your primary spokesperson is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, all things should be funneled through that one individual. Yes. It should include uh, contact phone numbers for, um, well, your legal team, certainly, your CEO, you know, if you have to get him out of bed in the middle of the night or whatever. Um, it, it should have all that information. It should have some talking points, some positive talking points about the, the company. And of course, you can't anticipate what that crisis is going to be. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to it's going to vary what you say when it strikes. And I think it is absolutely very very important to have just one person relaying the information, especially to the media yes. and to the public, because you know how that whisper down the lane happens. And the story turns into another story and another story, and they add on and add on and add on, and it's totally blown out of the water. Well, that and consumers want to see a single face, preferably a trustworthy face, prefer preferably a face with charisma, a face like Mark's, <laughs> you know, somebody who can instill confidence. He's the guy. As, you have a problem, call as, him. As you explain yourself. Um, you know, if, if your CEO is, you know, a kind of shifty-eyed looking guy and appears like he wants to be. <laughs> somewhere else rather than in front of a camera. Um, um, you might want to choose your senior vice president, yes. you know, who's a little bit more polished for that for that right. duty. Gary, I'm really lucky because if I ever were to have a situation where I would need some sort of crisis communication, and if anybody else out there would need that, I make one simple call to Swordfish Communications, mm -hmm. and I'm done. Right? I let you take care of. This is what this, this is your bread and butter, pal. This is what you get paid to do. <laughs> Right? That's what that's what I would do. That, I would pass that, it off to you. That's your that's your best call. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, it's eight five six seven six seven yeah, seven seven six seven. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I joke about it, but ideally um, It's serious stuff. I, I, ideally it sends a different message to have a PR person representing you in the time of crisis versus somebody at the top of the organization. Right. And, you know, it's great to call me or your PR person, and that person will guide you and come up with talking points and help you figure out what to do next and, you know, uh, who, who needs to be contacted and who should be your spokesperson. But ultimately, it should be somebody within the organization who's speaking on your behalf. Yeah, but, I mean, that person should always be coached. They should always yes. have... The, the right information to give. Yes. There's yes. nothing worse, and we, we've seen it throughout time, when the CEO or the face of a company gets up there and it totally backfires because the guy doesn't give the right message. Right. The classic example from recent times is with the BP oil spill. Right. Um, Dan, what's his name, the CEO of uh, BP, the, the Brit, uh, when he got before the cameras, you know, several weeks into the incident, and in his latest press briefing, he says in response to a question, hey, look, I want to get my life back, too. Right. Or I want to get my life back. Yeah, no. You know? and, Wrong and, and, thing and, to and say. completely backfired on him yeah. when people were suffering in the yeah. Gulf region, mm -hmm. when businesses were shut down because, you know, there was, you know, uh, tourism had ground to a halt, mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the, the fishing industry was at a standstill. Toilet, yeah. And he wanted to get his life back yeah. as a... Yeah. Um, very highly paid CEO yeah, of a major corporation, yeah. so that he could go relax with his high paid buddies back in his estate in England. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was the wrong thing to say. Absolutely. Well, we got to take a quick break. Hey, this always goes so fast, Gary, but we're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk and some we'll, more, give some more tips. Yeah, that sounds perfect. On the reputation wrap. Yeah, so we will take a quick break. We'll be right back on Reputation Wrap on the Radio Vision Network. Stick around. Extra Innings is the nation's premier indoor baseball and softball training center featuring indoor batting cages, seven multi-use tunnels, and training rooms. Extra Innings can provide professional instruction, private and group lessons, and the best year-round clinics. Along with a nationally recognized pro shop that features the latest and widest selection of equipment and apparel, our experienced staff can provide you with the right instruction and help you find the best equipment for your ability and budget. Extra Innings, where the game never ends. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way.
the way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. Welcome back to Reputation Wrap on Morning Coffee, part of the Radio Vision Network. I'm Gary Frisch with Swordfish Communications. We're a PR agency, and I'm with Charlene and Mark. And, you know, it is all about the reputation when it comes to PR. It's protecting your reputation, making sure, you know, your best foot's forward when you're out there in the marketplace, whether you're dealing with consumers or audiences. And it's so hard to stay on top of that. And it's, I wanted to address one small thing. I mean, maybe your company doesn't do something wrong. Maybe you're okay and you're in the clear, but someone else says that your company is doing something wrong. Yeah, that How happens, do you that happens that? sometimes. And, and the, one of the examples is Wendy's with a finger in the chili many mm -hmm. years ago. We talked about that a couple right. weeks ago here on the show. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you know that you are in the right, you just need to take the stance. Um, and that could come two ways. You can uh, choose not to address the issue uh, because you don't want to justify it or give it any more visibility. Right. And, or you can choose the indignant route, which is appropriate, mm -hmm. and say, wasn't us. Yeah. Didn't do this, and uh, we're going to move on from mm -hmm. this. Uh, in fact, as in the case with Whole Foods that we also talked about recently, you know, you may file a countersuit for libel or slander, slander. And, right. and do that very quickly. Um, uh, uh, and that leads into another point I want to make, which is that crises um, you generally fall into two different categories. Uh, well, three, including that one, actually. Uh, but it's generally something that um, you willfully did, your organization willfully did. You know, we're underpaying employees. We're not compensating them for overtime when you should have been, et cetera. Uh, or it's something that uh, was beyond your control, uh, like a uh, breakout of um, you know foodborne illness like right, E. coli right. with Chipotle or whatnot yeah. or, or Subway with uh, Jared you know and finding out that he was at first under investigation for child pornography. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, the crises straddle both. Um, for, for example the uh, Amtrak crash in Philadelphia last year mm -hmm. and they just it's released the results of that. Year. Yes right. it was a year last week and uh, here you had a, an accident. It was an accident. It was caused by human error uh, but Amtrak uh, had willfully chosen not to install these uh, positive, this positive braking system that would have prevented that accident, um, you know, for whatever reasons, budgetary or whatnot. So it was a case where uh, they were going to be um, held responsible ultimately right. for what was essentially an accident. Um, but um, that's that's more rare. Usually, it's one of the other two. And when you're dealing with a crisis, regardless of which type it is. Uh, the first thing you need to do is come up is provide a you know a mea culpa, uh, which literally means I am culpable. Right. Uh, we are responsible for this, regardless of how it happened. We are responsible for this. Yeah. We're going to make it right. Mm -hmm. And so then the next question, from a planning standpoint, in a situation, is uh, how do you go how? about making it right? Yeah. Well, the first thing to do is to make sure uh, all your constituents are completely informed and in compliance with what you're doing. Yes, yeah. and the second thing you need to do is uh, figure out a way to uh, address the problem, uh, make sure it doesn't happen again. That might mean, you know, heads roll, you know, uh, uh, firing individuals who were involved. Um, you know, the CEO of Volkswagen, who was uh, unceremoniously fired after the admissions scandal, um, they brought in the uh, head of the Porsche division to run Volkswagen. I don't think it was a particularly good move to bring somebody from in-house to fill that role. I think it should have been somebody from outside the organization. But generally speaking, um, you know, it might be appropriate to fire individuals. Uh, beyond that, you might you certainly want to uh, make your constituents whole again if there's a financial element. You know, don't wait for the lawsuits. Um, you know, find out you know what their issue is and how you can compensate them. And sometimes 
there's not a monetary issue that affects the constituents. Sometimes it's something that uh, you can make a monetary statement by donating to a cause right. uh, that's related to the to the issue. Um, these are all things that you can do to um, you know regain the faith of the public. And, and, and let's not let's not kid ourselves. The American people are very willing to give businesses a second chance or the benefit of the doubt, um, even in cases of willful misconduct. What about, you know, if there is an issue and an organization is in trouble and then it just like goes through all of the social media and it just snowballs and gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger when it doesn't happen. How do you shut that down? How do you shut down all that nasty social media that's happening? You can't shut down the social media nastiness. Uh, all you can do is um, come out with your statement. You can, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say turn a deaf ear to it, but at some point you have to stop. Uh, you have to stop feeding the beast. Right. And you have to uh, be mindful of the news cycle. And the, and the social media cycle is part of the news cycle mm -hmm. today. Um, you know, the media, the, the, the social media takes off, the news media report on the social media, right. then the social media snowballs as a result exactly. of the news media reporting yeah. on it. It's, it's a cycle. But it's usually for a limited duration of time. Yeah. If you've said what you need to say, if you've addressed the issue, if you've said what you're going to do to fix the issue, um, if you've apologized, and uh, apologies go a very long way, um, then you, at that point you can, you're probably safe uh, turning off the, the echo chamber of, of social media. And at that point, you know, you don't want to engage um, back and forth with Twitter, Twitter no. tweets, for example, or mm -hmm. Facebook posters. Uh, you let your statement speak for itself at some point. You mentioned earlier, Gary, about Subway. I was convinced that Subway would be buried by that scandal, that they would never work. that they never would recover, that they never would be the same, that the company was going to have to I, I envisioned that a total shutdown and then a relaunch of maybe a different brand. How were they able to get through seemingly unscathed? And and I know that that's a little bit of an overstatement, but man, the potential for the disaster for that company and how they were able to avoid it, it's kind of something that should be the example, right? It should be, um, and they bucked the odds. And guess what? I think they suffered more from that lawsuit over the length of their foot-long sandwich yeah. than they did because of, of Jared. Which, which boggles my mind, really. Well, in the case of Jared, um, this is another example, like I said before, of... Um, you know, nothing is of something happening out, outside of your control. Even if they had run background checks or a background check of Jared, and I, they probably did. Yeah, I'm uh, sure they did. This sort of thing wouldn't have turned up because right. he was not actively doing it. Nobody yeah. knew that if he had know. been, nobody knew he was right. doing it. He had never gotten uh, so, caught. So, so right. nothing would have been red flag. Um, you know, kind of like with that Uber driver. You right. Know, the background oh check failed to, failed to catch that. Yeah. But um, Subway did what they needed to do early on. Uh, which was when he first became embroiled in the investigation into his uh, colleague, the president of his uh, philanthropy, his, his nonprofit organization for children. Mm -hmm. um, they suspended their relationship with Jared. And I think uh, PR people knew that the term suspended in this context meant, you know, Jared is going to be no more. More is coming, uh, right. Uh, well, not necessarily that more, more, is coming. more revelations are coming, but we don't want to be associated with a whiff of anything to do with child pornography. I mean, child pornography is like the, the biggest taboo in the land. Yeah. You know, you don't normally recover quickly from anything yeah. to do with child pornography. Right. I'd written about it, and I defended Jared early, in the early stages because he hadn't been charged with anything. Um, sometimes when police are investigating, you know, person A, you know, and that person A is closely related and exchanging emails and files with person B, they're going to perhaps seize the person B's computers to investigate that as well. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought was happening early on. But at the same time, I applauded Subway for their move to suspend him right. at that point. And I figured at some point, maybe down the road, I didn't think they'd bring him back, but I think they would um, issue a statement, you know, uh, if, if Jared came up clear of this, uh, thanking him for his, you know, efforts in helping Subway grow its brand. Then, of course, we learned that uh, he wasn't just a passive yeah. you know, recipient of emails. He was actively involved in child pornography. And uh, at that point, Subway issued another statement. I think they could have done a better job with a stronger statement than what they said. Um, they said something to the effect of um, his actions don't, um, don't adhere to the values uh, of Subway, which, 
you know, that's that's PR speak, and yeah. it always kind of makes me uh, smile a little bit or yeah. chuckle a little bit. Cringe, because, yeah. And I'm thinking, for what company out there <laughs> right. is yeah. child pornography yeah. Yeah. to its core values? Yeah, it really is. It's it's crazy because, you know, the company was, was able to uh, sustain it, but you talked about the American public being forgiving, and in the same vein, they almost were able to separate Jared from Subway in a lot of ways where to me they were one and the same because I don't eat their sandwiches and, right and it's not a case where this had been happening for a while they were still actively involved in Jared but when this happened and they suspended the relationship every every whiff every iota of Jared you know, any of their sanctioned marketing campaigns was offline yeah you know uh, I said I said uh, Subway has failed if anybody can Google can go on YouTube and find a Jared a, new, a, a recent Jared commercial at this point yeah. and so I think they did a good job whitewashing the whole mm -hmm. uh, not whitewashing erasing, the incident erasing erase erasing yeah. Jared from their current marketing campaign yeah so I they think, tried I think, uh, I think they that helped them a lot it was really funny around the Super Bowl time they brought back some of those Super Bowl commercials that they had done from like late 90s early 2000s when the campaign first started and man you want to be creeped out it's like Jared, a cartoon version of Jared on a playground. With all, it's like, and this was a Super Bowl commercial, and when it aired, everybody was probably like, oh, this was great. And then you look at it, yeah, whatever cool. it was, 15 years later, and you're like, man, yeah. that's got a different context now. I have not seen that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but they make a good sandwich. I'm a fan of Subway, and, uh, you know, their marketing campaign has gone back to the food as a result. Yeah, well, you got you got to stay with what works, <laughs> right? That's... <laughs> So, Gary, this always goes so fast. The reputation rap, you give such great information. Uh, we're running out of time again, but I want you to make sure that you give everybody your information and they can get in touch with you. Company Swordfish Communications. We're online at www.swordfishcom.com. And if you are, uh, if you uh, are on Amazon, what is it, the Kindle or oh, Amazon yeah. all that stuff, check out uh, Gary's book, Squeeze Play. Coming soon as a hard copy as well. Oh, search, great. search it out. Uh, check it out. I, 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 I know it's been a week, Gary, since you gave me the card, but I will. I, I will scan the card and order a copy. Squeeze Play is the name of the I book. I think you like it. I, I'm, I can't wait to get it. So this is Gary Frisch. He's from Swordfish Communications. This is the Reputation Rap on Fridays morning coffee. So we got to take a quick break, Charlene. Yes, we do. We thank Gary for coming in. We gotta take, uh, did I just say we gotta take a quick break? Oh yeah, because we gotta take a quick break. We'll be right back on Morning Coffee on Radio Vision Network.